Well, it's a difficult condition that affects millions of Americans out there. We're talking about Alzheimer's disease, and it can take our loved ones' memories, their ability to think and function. And AD can also take a heavy toll on the caregiver. Whether you are currently caring for someone who has been diagnosed, you know someone who may have AD, or you'd like to learn more, it's really important to realize that other families just like you are coping with the very same thing right now. That's why our friends at Novartis Pharmaceuticals Corporation have put together a documentary. It's called The Caregivers. It's on their website, alzheimersdisease.com. Let's take a look. See, I think a lot of people think it's like uh, only a couple of years. It's, you know, it's not. It's a, it's a long, tedious, slow process which robs people of themselves, of their soul, of their, their uniqueness. You know, I have hope that maybe another year or two they might find something, you know. And if we could just get the good to last a little longer, then, then what more do you ask for? She was a wonderful person. She was very involved in my life and in my children's life. She was a very caring grandmother. You have to keep reminding yourself of the person that she was, not who she is now. And she's my mother, and I do love her, and I don't want her to, to be in pain. And it, every time I talk to her and I see and I hear how miserable she is, I feel terrible for her. Hmm. So as you can see, this is really just a difficult decision and a difficult thing for everybody involved. So if this is something that you're dealing with right now, we know that you likely have a lot of questions. So that's why this morning, as part of our My Health series, we're going to bring you so much good information. Joining us now this morning is Michelle. Her mother has Alzheimer's, and she's here with us this morning to share her experience as a caregiver. Michelle, good morning to you. Good morning. You know, as we said, we know, you know, just how difficult this, this has to be for you as the daughter, you know, ultimately having to care for your mother but walk us through your story. How long has your mother uh, been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and when did you start to notice that, that things were changing, that this was not the mom that you knew? Sure. Mom was clinically diagnosed about five years ago, but it was prior to that, around 1999, that we started to see changes. She would gather days worth of clothes and bring them into the living room so as she didn't have to deal with her closet. Or she might over tip a waitress, you know, for a $5 sandwich, she'd leave a $20 tip. Or she would over pay utility bills by thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So the behaviors were starting to set themselves up, but the family just read it off as being her. Mm. So, so how did this affect your life then, ultimately becoming your mom's caregiver? I had no idea what to expect from Alzheimer's. I thought at that point it was just about being forgetful. What I didn't realize is that my day was turned upside down. I was cooking for mom in the middle of the night when I would hear her pacing. I was trying to keep the doors locked. My dog was letting me know when she was up and about. And I was trying to hold down my career, which was a realtor. And so what I would do is get mom up and dressed and either have her come with me mm -hmm. and put the dog in the car telling her that she had to watch the dog so I could show the apartment and hopefully she would not leave. Or a few months later when I was able to get her into a day program, hope that she would actually get on the van of which she didn't always do. Now on those days that she refused, I just had to cancel my appointments or scramble for a co-worker to fill in for me. And that's when her internist said we need to make a life change here. Mm -hmm. If not, I was not going to be around to watch after her. And that's what so many caregivers forget. Mm -hmm. If we don't take care of ourselves, who's going to watch after the patient? Absolutely. And, and I know that in dealing with some, own, uh, some challenges in my own life, sometimes you feel like you're alone. Exactly. I don't know that I was trying to keep it a secret. I was just so overwhelmed and so busy in the day that I had no time to turn to anyone. I would try to gather information on the computer, but it was when I was missing at the office that someone reached out to me to ask where I had been and it turned out that he had both parents experiencing dementia or Alzheimer's. Right. So as a friend he was just able to give me good advice. Social workers I might go to, systems I might look up. It was the best news I could have gotten. 
Mm, so there are people who are going through what you went through, obviously, and, and what you went through was, in, was incredibly difficult. Uh, but, but let's talk a little bit about some of the positives um, out of this situation. And, and again, for our viewers out there, just know that there are some positives to this, right? Absolutely. It's a side of my mom that none of us want to experience, but I'm getting to be with my mom. I was able to be the aggressor in where she was going to be placed and what kind of treatment I could be at peace with. And being in a presentation like today gives my mom a voice, mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. What advice, Michelle, would you give for someone who has just found out their loved one has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease? Just hang in there, and as long as you do it with love, it will all turn out and keep your humor. Mm. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us this morning. You just have no idea how much I think this is going to touch our viewers who are dealing with the same thing and also offer them hope, which is what you needed and what you got during a very difficult time. So thank you so much for being with us on the show this morning. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. And I know there are still a lot of questions to be answered about this really tough topic. And so when we come back, we're going to talk to a doctor about Alzheimer's disease, what exactly it is, what may cause it, and more. Plus, I'll show you where you can get some solid information and support for what you may be going through right now. So keep it right there. Welcome back, everybody. Before the break, we were talking to Michelle, a woman whose mother has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Michelle is her mother's primary caregiver, and that's a choice hundreds of thousands of families are dealing with right now. But that's not a decision that should be made without the advice of a doctor. And with so many more questions to be answered, we brought in Dr. Jessica Israel to help us learn more about Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Israel is here courtesy of our friends at Novartis Pharmaceuticals Corporation. Welcome to the show, Dr. Israel. Thanks. What exactly is Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disease of the brain. But what that really means in real life is it's a disease that takes a person's memory and it affects eventually every aspect of their life. How easy is it to, to diagnose and, and, and how important is it that it is diagnosed now? A diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease is critically important. The earlier you can do it, the more you're able to affect that patient's life positively, right? It's a fairly easy disease to, to diagnose in the office. When a patient comes in, we use validated memory tests to see where they are on a scale relative to their level of education and their background, and then sometimes lab tests and sometimes some neuroimaging studies to put together the story. That being said, the medical tools we have in the office are no substitute for just a really good medical history mm. and listening to what the people who have brought this patient in have to say about what's happening every day. And so give us a little more about this, this evaluation process. What does it entail? So it's, me it's memory screens really okay. in the office and we ask the patient a series of questions, some easy and some are a little bit difficult and then we sort of put together a score that tells us where that patient probably is memory wise, helps us make a diagnosis. But again, it's hearing what's happening in that person's everyday life that puts together the real clinical picture. Alzheimer's disease is a clinical diagnosis. Your lab tests, your brain imaging studies and your testing really just backs up the story that comes into the room. Do we have any idea as to what causes Alzheimer's disease? It's an interesting question because there are a lot of theories. There are clear pathologic changes that happen when you look at the brain of someone with Alzheimer's disease. There are structures that form called plaques and tangles that clearly affect the functioning of brain cells, although it's hard to tell exactly how much, exactly how, and what chemicals are involved. Lots of theories, but no clear, clear reason why. And so what do we do, Dr. Israel, if we suspect our loved one does have Alzheimer's disease? What do we do? In in terms of finding the right care team and uh, to diagnose it and also to treat their needs. The most important thing that you can do if you think your loved one has Alzheimer's disease is bring them to the physician's office and then tell the story. Tell the physician why you think this and let the patient's voice be heard as well. That's the most important thing. That way the physician can put together a plan to treat the illness and also to support the needs. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when patients come into the office, the best question you can ask as a doctor is, tell me what's going on this week. Tell me what's been going on for the last month, because that way you can design the treatment plan that really meets the needs of that person. 
I have to tell you, just excellent, excellent information for families who may be dealing with Alzheimer's right now or may even suspect their loved one has Alzheimer's disease. So thank you, Dr. Israel, for being with us this morning. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And for our viewers at home, there is so much information out there for you and so many answers to your questions on alzheimersdisease.com. There you'll find all the information that we touched on here this morning and so much more. Once again, alzheimersdisease.com.